for the sources of information. For the sources of information, it is the patient, the mother, the daughter with a reliability of 70%. For the chief complaint, it is auditory hallucinations and hallucinatory gestures with the patient's words, Gako medyante usahay, simbahan, usahay, silingan. And the companion's words, dugay naman na siya, nalahi. For her premorbid personality, Ria described herself as outgoing, as she is sociable and a happy-go-lucky person who likes company whenever available. As a child, she was obedient but later started to oppose her parents. She began to lie her way into getting what she wanted, even at the expense of her parents, such as shoplifting, and she became easily irritable, especially when she does not get her way and had to be stopped from fighting. She became unreliable and was deemed irresponsible by her family. They often had disagreements, especially when her life choices. She thought of herself as her own person and did not bother what others thought of, especially her siblings, who she had poor relationships with. She does not share her problems and just tend to distract herself till her problems go away. For the history of present illness, five months prior to her consult, there is a note, she noted a internal mass as well as intermittent vaginal bleeding outside her regular menstruation, wherein she tolerated and as it was not causing any pain or discomfort. Now, a few hours prior to her admission, there was increased abdominal pain as well as increased bleeding, which led to the current admission to the ob to the ob service. Diagnostics done with, by, with the following results, CBC her, with notable anemia, with a hemoglobin of 1.97, hematocrit of 0 0.32, and RBC count of 4.86. Blood type revealing O positive. Actin time and thrombin time was within normal limits. COVID tests were negative, both rapid and RT-PCR. Serum chemistry test uh, was remarkable with, for potassium, uh, for hypokalemia and hyp hypomagnesemia. The rest are normal. Transvaginal ultrasound revealed an introital mask to consider a submucous myoma, and large retroverted uterus with myoma and adenomyoma with normal ovaries. VDRL was done, which was reactive, and HIV rabbit test done, which was negative. To, to start with, the OB gynae service give, gave the patient losartan, one tab twice a day, and amlodipin for, her, for hypertension with KCL three times a day for three doses and magnesium sulfate two grams, one, one is to one dilution to correct the hyperkalemia and the hypomagnesemia. They started multivitamins and iron tab for the anemia and methamnamic acid for the pain. They also transfused one unit of PAC-RBC and they planned for trans transabdominal hysterectomy with bilateral saltingo-ophrectomy. They also referred to internal medicine for cardiopulmonary clearance. The second hospital, they... And hence, she was referred to the CL Psychiatry Service. Morning, 
Thank you. Apologies, doctors. I, I am back now. So for the past psychiatric history of Rhea, seen in the timeline, she had her first symptoms during 20 years prior, approximately 2002, and noted to have hallucinatory gestures described as talking to self and initiate and observed to be in a talking in an incoherent manner with bouts of having a belief that someone's out to get her, hence paranoia. The symptoms began uh, when she was in Manila along with her friends and told their family that she suddenly began to have episodes of isolating herself and hiding in the room. They tried to get a psychiatric consult in Manila, but she refused and was then brought back to Davao. No consult was done by her family at this point as she was not violent. So in the interim, there was gradual worsening of symptoms described as wandering around their neighborhood and bouts of loudly talking to self at times and would be seen playing with garbage and throwing it into it at random directions. She was observed to have poor self-care and would be have to be reminded repeatedly to clean up or would need to be assisted by her daughter. When she was being bathed, her daughter did not notice any signs of open source nor any rash bumps in her body. She had unkempt hair most of the time and was letting her nails grow out. She would be taken care by her mother and daughters and it's not violence. Violent, hence they did not see the reason for a psychiatric consult nor did Rhea want to go for a consult as she believed she had no illness. So, at, so currently at this year, 2022, uh, due to the admission to the ob department, due to bleeding, she, she was referred to our department. For past medical history, uh, the pertinent positives are hypertension, which was approximately 10 years ago, uh, given amylondid pain, 10 milligram once a day, and poorly compliant. And there is no significant note of her, any other heredofamilial diseases. No notable surgery admission at this point, with no documented sexually transmitted infections during this period. For her family history, pertinent family history, for pertinent family medical history is hypertension for both paternal and maternal, as well as diabetes, diabetes mellitus for the paternal side. And for the psychiatric history, pertinent family history of tobacco and alcohol, alcohol use. No other consult for any other psychiatric illness were noted. For the family dynamic, of our patient, uh, I'm presenting a brief table of the family dynamics, which will be made clear by a following genogram. Now, as you can see, the father of the patient is, uh, if Rhea is already dead, and they have, she has seven other siblings with two known children and other six unknown children. Presented here is the family genogram of our patient with the with its respective with its respective uh, markings to start to start the box of the uh, note the box in red uh, noting the re the relationship between Rhea and the, her father so Ria's father was a good provider and he known to be a stoic person and was a good man who was reliable and always provided for his family and always made sure his family was taken care of. Ria's father worked hard to provide for his growing family and was always toiling away in the farm. Ria's father used to sleep and drink alcohol with friends to relax and is known to enjoy a smoke of tobacco after me. Now, whenever Ria's father came home, he would be easily irritated, especially when it is noisy and disorganized at home. This led Rhea to butt heads with her father, often which led to her being corporally, uh, punished corporally via belt. Furthermore, Rhea defied her father because of his strictness and soy stoicism, seeing him as someone who is hard to please and a slave driver, barking orders at her. She would be slacking on her studies or disobey orders given to her. This led to more punishment and her being told to get herself together with no further explanation. Due to this, Rhea felt that her father just wanted to hit her. This happened at happened almost weekly until Rhea eventually started to learn her father's pattern and started to get away with not doing her work. 
As Rhea grew up, she would still have bouts of disagreements with her father, but her father would be despondent and just left her to her own devices till, she pa- till he passed away, never reconciling with her. As Rhea was not vocal with her feelings towards his father, and she randomly, seldomly shares other concerns to him. Now, if you've noticed the double red dotted line, it, this re- represents the discord between the two that was never resolved. Next is Rhea's mother, who was the homemaker. Being the youngest, Rhea was her mother's favorite. Her mother devoted herself to the care of Rhea, making sure that she is tended to appropriately. Her mother's time is usually divided equally between housework and tending to Rhea. She gave time for her whenever she needed help, balancing it with her housework. She was initially present for Rhea during school activities and made sure that there were no problems at school. During their free time, she would play with Rhea, and she felt closer to her mother when she was younger. But a riff started to form as she began to be annoyed with her, as she felt that she was doting and felt like she was being suffocated as she was beginning to form, as Rhea began to form her own social groups. Now, the green dotted line with a symbol in between represents the, it represents that previously there was a cutoff between the two due to conflict, but currently it is restored, uh, the disgruntled relationship has been restored between the two of them. Next is, between Rhea and Mo and her siblings, most of her siblings, uh, most of her relationship with her siblings are strained because she was considered as the black sheep of their family. They often would underestimate her and did not rely on her for any major decisions in their family. She was also not seen as capable to take care of herself and her children, nor any form of finances as she had history with substance abuse. Although this is the case. Her sister Rita is close with her. So, as she was next to her in age, they would be together most among the siblings prior, prior, to, leave, to, prior to leaving for Manila. She also tends to share some problems with her sister. Rita is the one who tends to be the channel between Rhea and her family and tries to knock some sense into her when Rhea does something that displeases their family. Note the dark dotted line between most of the siblings and Rhea, presenting the current indifference they feel for Rhea, while the solid green line between Rhea, Rita and Rhea presents their harmonious relationship. Yeah. Rhea has multiple sexual partners and ended up giving birth seven to eight times. Most of her children are not with her and are being taken care of by the family of their fathers. Hence, the other details are unknown. She is currently living in the house of her mother, along with her two children, El and Carmel. They would have their minor fights due to the current favor of Rhea, such as wandering, down to self or self-care. But her two children eventually accepted her condition, and since she was not violent, they tolerated her. The blue dotted line between Rhea and the multiple men represents one-night stands or the fleeting relationships that they've had. El and Carmel have the same line representing harmony between them, which is also true between them and their mother currently, albeit not present in in the figure. And the blue, uh, but the dotted red line that was interrupted between the other six children and Ellen Carmel represents the that they are disconnected or estranged from their other siblings. For her anamnesis. <clears throat> Rhea was born from a JP70707 mother. She is a youngest child among eight. She was delivered full term with via NSVD at home. There was no known complication with no noted uh, developmental delays at this time. So She was breastfed until she was six and mixed feeding started at four months as her mother was her main caregiver. Initially, she received complete immunization per local health center. 
She was not a picky eater and said to have an easy temperament. She started crawling along with her first words, which was dada at about nine to 10 months and was talking about 12 to 13 months of age. She was started on toilet training at about three to four years of age with no childhood trauma recalled this time. At about seven years old, Aria started her elementary education. She was initially accompanied by her mother during the first few years, but later would be allowed to go by herself. And she follows the instructional teacher, but is known to put herself in trouble as she tends to be rowdy in class, being noisy. Her grades were just above passing, as she was noted with difficulty due to her rowdiness. She is known to be a follower who joins extracurricular activities pertaining to music and dance. She usually plays at their classmates for going home or after classes due to her noted difficulty in and stubbornness she had to be monitored with her schoolwork but being the youngest child she was not expected to perform well in all things at a young age and take and to take her time in developing this made her feel that she had nothing to prove to anyone but herself she was known to be someone who seems to be free of problems and she, she would cope again by trying to avoid the issues and would go to distract herself with her friends. During high school, she started to skip classes, which caused her to stop schooling when she was only second year. As she was exposed to other true one children, she did not see the reason as to why she needed to go to school anymore and preferred to go with her friends. She took pride that she was already a woman at that age, stating that she had already engaged in coitus and she had multiple sexual partners during this time. When she was about 18 years of age, uh, her friends took her to Manila for their dreams of a greener pasture, but she ended up working as a pros prostituted woman and got hooked to illicit substances like methamphetamine and cannabis that she took almost nightly for her work as it helps take the edge off and amplify the experience of Cortes. She stated she liked her work as she found an easy found easy money along with the satisfaction of sexual, sexual pleasure. While she was in Manila, she had no contact with her family and she stayed for approximately 10 years. And her family does not know the full details because when she came back to Dapa approximately 20 years ago, she had already developed symptoms of uh, symptoms of psychosis stated earlier. Her mother took her in along with her two daughters, who till this day is living with her. She spent her time as a for, for the vocational. She spent her time as a commercial sex worker, and during her day off, she would tend to her daily needs, such as cooking and lawn, and doing the laundry. Currently, she is not known to have any other notable skills, and. Aside from her working as a commercial sex worker prior, she has never been otherwise gainfully employed. For the sexual aspect, uh, she so sees herself as a female and is attracted to the opposite gender. She had her monarchy at age 12 and the critarchy at age 15 with her boyfriend or partner. Just oriented on the sexual mostly through friends and the social media. She had multiple sexual, uh, and she had multiple sexual partners, but she does not consider any one of them as a romantic relationship. So most of them are one night stands and does not, not, and does not consistently practice safe sex. Since she came back to Davao, she, is, she has not had any sexual partner so far. For her, for the values and belief. She's a Roman Catholic, but is not strict with her beliefs and does not go to church, but respects the faith. And for the legal and military, there is no significant uh, history for you. For the substance use, uh, of most of her substance have been already stopped uh, pre previously with coffee remaining as it was taken a day prior to the refer, well, a day prior to the uh, referral of Ria, I mean, to the admission of Ria, it is of note that both cannabis and methamphetamine were stopped more approximately more than twenty-five years ago, 
most of them, most of these were, most of these substances were started at 15 years of age and was due to peer pressure, but continued on due to the, the occupation that she was in. For her psychiatric review of systems, of note is the hallucination, disorganized behavior and speech, as well as the negative symptoms. And then there was noted irritability. And for the personality aspects, there is repeated lying, poor impulse control, responsible, and the lack of remorse. For the physical review of systems, of note is the weight loss, fatigue, decrease of appetite. There is prioritis, note before, with some episodes of dysuria, urinary frequency, discharges, nocturia, or air flank pain. There is also noted joint pain reported by, by Rhea. Hello, good morning, doctors. Before we proceed with the presentation, uh, are there any small contributions or questions regarding the history of this patient? Thank you. None for me. Thank you, Pudo. Uh, I'll, I'll be continuing po muna to the physical examination. So for the physical examination, general, general, in general, the patient was conscious, coherent, not, any, not in any cardiopulmonary distress at this time, with the following vital signs of uh, hyperten hypertensive at 150 over 90. The rest of the vital signs are normal with heart rate of 84, respiratory rate of 20, uh, normal temperature, a febrile of 36.3. Her, her weight is 60 kilograms with a height of 158 centimeters with a BMI of 27.2 kilo, kilograms per meter squared, which is considered overweight. For the physical examination of, of note for the skin, the patient's skin was brown, moist, and warm to touch. There is, at this point, during the examination, there was all, there was no pallor, but the, the the nail bed was only slightly pinkish, uh, oh, possibly owing to the to the previous anemia, but was already transfused prior with skin uh, with no uh, skin lesions noted. Her hair was noted to be light pink in color, with oh, with CRT less than two seconds. For For, the, for her head, it's remarkable as it is normocephalic, uh, slightly pinkish, palpebral conjunctiva with anecteric slurry. There was noted black circles under her eye, uh, patent nares, no cervical lymph adenopathies noted. For her chest, heart, abdominal, ab abdominal findings are unremarkable with the ex extremities also unremarkable. Now, for the neuropathy of the patient, of note is that the pupils have a low, a slow reaction to light, and accommodation called, uh, which is called uh, argal, Robertson pupils. Other other part of the neuropathy, but but of note is uh, cranial nerve one, cranial nerve four is not fully. I was not assessed, but the others were assessed and was unremarkable. Cerebral, ex cerebral examination noted negative for dyslexia coquinicia, which was tested to rapid alternating, uh, rapid alternating movements, but is positive for Romberg's test as the patient had difficulty in maintaining balance while while her eyes are closed and standing up. There is no no bubbling design with no no color GDT noted. There was a taxic gait also noted as upon. Gate, there was uh, uncoordination and difficulty in balance at times. No hypokinesia, rigid, rigidity, or abnormal involuntary movements noted. There was a uh, noted absence of position sense or commonly known as proprioception taken by uh, that by moving the by moving the in the lower extremity to be exact by moving the big the big toe up or down, asking the patient if there is if the toe is moving away or going towards her. Deep tendon reflexes of note, uh, plus two normal and upper extremities, but there is a slightly diminished uh, DTR on the lower extremity. 
particularly in the patellar reflex to be exact. Moving on to her mental status examination, she seemed to have a power of gaze while waiting and bloody odor was noted upon her examination. She was just wearing her, the patient uniform with the long mid-length and kept hair that was again color pink. Behavior and uh, for her behavior, she was cooperative with fair eye contact. She was noted to be euthymic with blunted affect. She had fragmented sleep at this point, but reported uh, good appetite. Her speech was continuous, but with low volume and had to be instructed to increase her volume. Slow rate of speech is noted, but fluent. Auditory hallucinations noted, which were male and female voices, making fun of her and telling her that someone was coming for her, which, which caused her to be paranoid. There was looseness of association noted with with notable thought blocking, as she would stop talking as if she lost her train of thought. And again, there was paranoia noted at this time. She was oriented to this three, spe three spheres. Uh, no cut as was done, but of note, it is not completed due to thought blocking. Due to thought blocking, uh, only able to garner a score of 10, but again, it is incomplete. Memory is impaired for remote and recent past, but unimpaired for the recent and immediate. For the for her concentration, there is no uh, no there is difficult uh, there was no response due to thought blocking and had to be redirected for questions regarding the serial subtraction spelling and the abstract thought. Although she readily answered for the information and intelligence, which was who was the president, which is Duterte. For her judgment and insight, the patient exhibited unimpaired test judgment and social judgment at the time of the examination. But when asked for insight, she feels that something may be wrong, but is not fully convinced by it. Thus, at this point, there's no insight to her current illness. For the salient features, start with the salient features that could be found in our history. First and foremost, she is a 15-year-old female who is a high school undergraduate with unstable parenting noted by the by her relationship with her father and this and initial disgruntled relationship with her mother with low social economic status in an urban setting with note of cluster B personality characteristics noted that repeated lying disregard of one's safety for planning ahead and response hence being noted to be responsible with some irritabilities and some lack of remorse. There's no history of family psych so psychotic illness, but there's a significant history of hypertension and diabetes with, with a history, with a personal and family history of substance use. There's also noted multiple sexual partners during the course of her history, but there is no documented STIs during this time or sexually transmit, transmitted infections. Now, the, there is also the development of psychiatric symptoms along the way, which was the, noted to be chronic and was described to be hallucinatory gestures, paranoia, poor self care, and wandering behavior. And with the current problem in the history of a abnormal uterine bleeding with a positive test for, for syphilis. For the salient features by uh, the mental status examination and physical examination, there is noted persecutory delusion or paranoia, causing paranoia, perceptual disturbances, loses of association and thought blocking. If I make mood with blunted affect, spontaneous speech, uh, low volume rate, uh, and the noted motor and neurological symptoms described earlier, such as the Argyle Robertson. Pupils, diminished DTRs. Which leads us to the differential diagnosis. For this, the two, the two main diagnoses that we're fighting is psychotic disorder due to neurosyphilis 
and schizophrenia disorder. For psychotic disorder due to neurosyphilis, uh, Rhea is, has a history of multiple sexual partners and other high risk behaviors prior to psychotic symptoms. Now, it is of note that uh, neurosyphilis is currently not that common in our society, but uh, due to the recent advent of anti uh, due to the advent of antibiotics, antibiotics, but increased high risk behavior are associated with high risk, higher chances of acquiring such a such as uh, multiple sexual partners, uh, her as, such as Rhea's occupation, substance use, and also uh, Rhea has already been tested positive for syphilis. Now, it is of note that development of neurosyphilis may develop regardless of the stage within one to two years if left untreated, which also makes it rare if it is caught early and treated. Now, there was also the motor and neurological symptoms noted as the following, the Ariel Robertson pupils, taxia, diminished DTR, loss of position sense, which presents a deficit located in the posterior column, the spinal cord which is usually present with neuro with neurosyphilis. And the criteria for psychotic disorder due to neurosyphilis or uh, another medical condition cannot be ruled out due to the presence of psychotic symptoms, but we but at this time there due to the gap between the patient being away in Manila, there is still a lack of information to conclusively say that this might be neurosyphilis, which leads us to schizophrenia disorder. Now, Rhea is a female, and the start of her symptoms, which uh, going back would be about 28 to 29 years of age, uh, would fall under the mean age of schizophrenia for women. Now, the presence of psychotic symptoms with noted decreased functionality after a long period of time satisfies our criterion A, B, C, and D of schizophrenia with the noted illicit substance use, which provides the increased risk in the development of psychotic symptoms due to use of illicit substance. Now, TR schizophrenia cannot be fully satisfied due to, the pres uh, due, due to the presence of the medical condition. And as to the temporality of symptoms due to presence of current trypanemal infection, which goes against criterion E of schizophrenia, stating that it should not be attributable to another medical condition. But still, at this point, this condition is considered. The other conditions considered were the following. Now, delirium, uh, as there was anemia infection during that time, uh, with uh, associations as anemia and as well as infection uh, will aid in the development of delirium along with her age, as increasing age presents with lowering biological reserve, which can increase the risk of development of delirium. Now, there was no noted impairment in awareness, concentration, and source story with the patient, as well as the chronicity of the symptoms with no present, uh, with no fluctuations, as well as no report of new or worsening of her symptoms. Hence, this condition was ruled out. Next, uh, next is the consideration for, uh, for intellectual disability, which was noted in the developmental age of low with low grades, which was noted to, barely, to, to be barely passing. There are difficulties in learning, uh, as there are learning difficulties in learning academic skills involve reading, writing, or take time or money with support needed, noted. And during this time, history of irritability, truancy, and poor impulse with Rhea during her younger age, and difficult as it is noted in it intellectual disability that difficulty is regulating emotion behavior and there is limited understanding of risk in social situations and at risk of being manipulated by others or gullibility. Now, prior to start of symptoms, prior to start of uh, psychotic symptoms though, uh, she, had, she was able to take care of self with no need for supervision. But but currently, uh, it is to consider, but can also be attributed to her current uh, psychotic symptoms. And due to the lack of information, uh, cannot be fully ruled out. But plan for NPT is also considered for Rhea. And lastly, 
considered was the uh, antisocial personality disorder, which was present by number one, the unstable or reactive parenting with signs of contact disorder with the uh, during the during young. Uh, as unstable and erratic parenting or inconsistent parental discipline may increase the likelihood that conduct disorder will evolve into a personality disorder, their low social economic status and urban settings shows uh, increased chances of developing. Uh, but there is no family history of psychiatric illness and uh, is increased, which shows that <clears throat> the the chances of developing a social personality uh, is increased when there is a relative with said diagnosis. Now, the criteria of antisocial personality disorder is not uh, satisfied during this time with Rhea, but the disorder, the disorder itself is ruled out, but some personality traits are present, such as the <clears throat> lying irritability and the impulsivity at this point. I mean, prior to the start of the psychotic symptoms. I mean, so for our working diagnosis, uh, <clears throat> it is schizophrenia disorder versus psych psychosis, secondary to neurosyphilis, antisocial personality traits, neurosyphilis, hypertension stage two, uncontrolled, with RCD 11 diagnosis of 6A20.10, schizophrenia multiple episodes currently symptomatic versus 6E61.2, secondary psychotic syndrome with hallucinations and delusions. And next is 6011, prominent personality traits or patterns at the social, uh, followed by A52.3, near syphilis unspecified, and I11, hypertensive heart disease. Uh, prior to proceeding to the biopsychosocial formulation psychodynamics. Are there any questions so far for doctors? Okay, so moving on, Paul. For the biopsychosocial, <clears throat> sorry, formulation and psychodynamics. So, pasted here is the biopsychosocial simulation of Rhea, a 51-year-old female who's presenting with psychotic symptoms. She gradu gradually presented with the symptoms of psychosis and steadily worsened to a point where she was dysfunctional 20 years ago. And prior to the she had history of substance use. Now, for her biological aspect, her, vul her vulnerability or predisposing would be because of her high-risk work because of her work of being a commercial sex worker, which led to her to the use of illegal substances and placed her at a more increased risk to have products that form a dysfunctional, uh, dis dysfunctional proteins as well as to increase the risk for high-risk behavior leading to increased ch chances of infection. Now, real hypertension is also an additional risk factor as studies have shown that the prevalence of hypertension in hypertension in psychotic disorders are related and can be explained by a unidirectional association between hypertension and psychosis wherein inflammation and irregular autonomic nervous system activity through multiple mechanisms causes the psychotic infect psychotic symptoms now the the there was also the infection noted which was the positive test for syphilis which through the through the delay in receiving prompt diagnosis and treatment also place her at more risk of developing the the work the sequela of neurosyphilis and let and then increase the chances of her developing psychosis now the along with additional isolation stubbornness further more delayed her, her condition the substance use also gave her more chances for impulsivity, hence higher chances of infection. But currently the protective factors would be her that the no history of any previous psychiatric illness. And currently she has no current substance use. Psychologically, uh, Rhea presented in her early years with uh, some 
antisocial personality traits as brought about by her early upbringing wherein her father would be strict on her so as expected her to act a certain manner, which was to perform well on her studies. She grew up hating this as she seemed her father, as she deemed her father too strict and was not, not noteworthy and ended up not making a role mod- model out of him. This, this made it clear for Rhea that she needed to follow her own plans and that she had to do things herself. Her insecure avoid, her insecure avoidant attachment, attachment led her to feel free to explore her environment without concerning them, concerning herself with parents or the consequences. And she is more uh, both physically and emotionally independent from her parents, as noted by her trip to Manila, as noted by her leaving for Manila. And and due to the con- continued discord by her father, who was not resolved resolved till he already he already died. Uh, her coping mechanism is also problematic as she had a coping mechanism of avoiding, which led to the poor health seeking behavior as well as the consideration of ID leading her to further be impulsive as well as being possibly suggestible with the further develop for the further increase of developing psychosis so from the from the biological aspect the 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 substance use the the multiple sexual partners as well as the occupy uh, multiple sexual partners would lead to more chances of developing the infection and then which also led to higher chance of developing neurosyphilis and then the development of the psychosis and then since the development of the since psychosis was already there, poor self-care and hence was noted and hence she cannot further advocate for herself, perpetuating the said condition. Again, we're being stubborn and with poor insight to illness as a, as a fact. But currently she is being cooperative with her current treatment, which, which is helpful with her current condition. Socially, she, uh, she had poor family dynamics as in the early years uh, her actions her her tr- personality traits led to the poor relationship with her family which this also led to her living in manila away from her family family she did not ha- proceed with her she did not proceed with education as she had started to be skipping classes thus leading to poor educational background and she also worked as a commercial sex worker or a prostituted woman. The leaving early was not uh, due to the poor family dynamics. Uh, When she left early, the family did not really seek for her and just knew that she was in Manila. And it was, and further, furthermore, for her environment, the prostitution led to further, to substance use, which led to further high risk behaviors. And then when she came back, the initial tolerance by the family members of her condition to bring in for consult because she was not violent furthermore perpetuated her condition as well as the lack of knowledge about the illness. And then the, but currently, thankfully, the current willingness of the family to assist with treatment and the referral to CL Psychiatry Service and the presence of SBM, CIPBM currently is helpful to Rhea. for her course during the referral. Now, uh, it is of note that that she was referred during the second hospital day. Now, at this point in time, our, our goals of treatment would be the following. Of course, symptom control, uh, the alliance to ensure adherence, not only to the, to the patient, but also to the family. The health monitoring, although currently she is already admitted to the ob service, Psychoeducation specifically to the family as to her condition and to build insight for Rhea and to prevent agitation for and to prevent agitation to be so that she will can be treated properly by the main service. Long term wise, uh, further decline uh, would uh, preventing further decline is key, as well as ensuring functionality and continued social support by her family.
additional diagnostics were done during the second day by the main service. Uh, noted improvement of the hemoglobin, hematocrit, and RBC after the after the transfusion of one packed RBC. So she is she has improvement and. And psychoeducation and safe, patient safety planning was done. Medication started was risperidone, two milligram, on tablet once a day at bedtime. As she, for the reason that uh, number one, this is a, she had a medical comorbid at this point, but two also that she, uh, also that also that uh, con the condition needed to be controlled to be able to for her to for her to be treated properly. And uh, there have been researches wherein uh, risperidone is compared with other second generation antipsychotics during this period, the time in patients with possible neurosyphilis and risperidone, although the risk of EPS is higher, the, the chances of uh, the, the, the The results were better during this period. The results for Spartan were better. On her third and fourth hospital day for the ob side, uh, for the ob service or the main service, uh, they only noted stable vitals with the, with correction of fluids. Uh, they were just awaiting for IM clearance with continuing med uh, management and medications during this time. She was also seen by the internal medicine service already and evaluated for CP clearance for the procedure of TAPSO or and assessed neuro wise and already they were already considered neurosyphilis uh, and requested for additional diagnostics, particularly cranial MRI with contrast to to see if there was any other any other structural abnormalities that may point towards the current condition. So the the assessment, their assessment near rise uh, also pointed to the ataxic gate, the low diminished DTR at this point, as, as well as the loss of position sense. For the for the CL psychiatry service, uh, at this point in time, uh, she was calm and cooperative, if I'm good constricted affect. At this point, she denied perceptual disturbances. Her daughter reports uh, some hallucinatory gestures, such as talking to self, and with some episodes of potential speech, partial insight at this point. But, but she is already able to sleep, and uh, her appetite is good, and no violent outbursts or suicidal ideations reported. She, she is watched closely over by her daughters. There is no other subjective complaints with the with we at this time, so medications was uh, continued. So supportive secretary rendered particularly uh, of note to uh, psychoeducation with uh, and reassurance for you. Yeah. On the from for the fifty sixth hospital day, uh, the Obagani service is still waiting OR the OR, availability of an OR and a clearance and the clearance by IM. So they were still continuing condition continuing their management. Uh, for the internal medicine, medicine service during these days, the, the, the patient, they already cleared the patient uh, for, for the said operation. And they, the patient was already seen by anesthesia for the, for the operation. Now, no, medica, no additional medications for now added by the service. And they referred that to their, the new, to their new, Neuro consultant to the new service at this point. Now in the 56 hospital, the CL psychiatry wise, uh, there the of note is the of note is the disappearance of hallucinatory gestures. Still same denying the disturbance. No violent outburst. No subjective complaints. The patient is aware. Uh, was already uh, was already explained on the, the procedure that was done to her by the, by the main service, but asking how she felt about the procedure. She felt that she, it was needed so that her condition will improve, but she did not want to feel pain or bleeding anymore. So, but still at this time, continue uh, medications of one tablet of risperidone was continued. Question. Yes, Pa. 
at this point, what were you thinking regarding your diagnosis? At this point, po, doc, uh, regarding my diagnosis, uh, I was more leaning towards a possible uh, medical condition that that was that is also with the information available po, I was leaning towards a possible neurosyphilis na po. That is the IM's ano, impression, right? Oo. Yes po. So, what other ano, uh, diagnostic would you request? Did you request for any other diagnostics that would confirm uh, the, the neurosyphilis or were you just waiting for the IM department no, to request for some Kasi you have to be working with the IM. Yes po. Yes, uh, yes po. The, uh, I personally ha- did not uh, start, uh, I mean, requested any other laborator- laboratories po. Doc, but uh, seeing dito po sa second na, na sa next, sa following slide po, doc, the, I was talking with the IM. They were already, uh, prior to this, they were already following up for the cranial MRI as well as the uh, CSF studies po doc so yun po yung other additional ano na request po doc but it was not initiated by me po okay po now uh, uh, ipakita ko po doc on the on the seventh to eighth uh-huh. hospital, yes, but so in the seventh to eighth hospital, the uh, of note here for the Obigani side that Tabso was done with no issues and minimal blood loss. Uh, at this point, they were already planning for discharge uh, after monitoring of the patient. Uh, so for our medication, it was uh, we uh, we placed it on hold prior to the OR and resume once the patient was returned to the ward already. Why on hold ang medication? What is your protocol for antipsychotic uh, prior ano, surgery? Do you have uh, uh, evidence for this that you have to hold? No? I, I do apologize. Doc. I am lacking in uh, liter- literature for that one. But so there the, are literatures that would recommend, no? Mm-hmm, so yes, what have you read about this? What, what, what You should have a rationale for it. Mm-hmm. Holding yes, anti-psychotic. Yeah. Yes, po. Uh, rationally, at this point in time, as the patient would be under uh, uh, the medication was stopped. Uh, uh, the procedure was done in the early morning, po, doc, and then the medication was to be taken at the evening. And, and then since the patient would be undergoing uh, general anesthesia at this point in time, uh, since our medication may produce hypotension and then uh, the cardiac abnormality. So I uh, stopped the, the, the medication so that it won't uh, have a synergistic effect to the, uh, to the anesthesia, the anesthesia service to be given po and have an adverse effect to our patient po. Is the patient uh, medically unstable to, uh, no, uh, to potentiate any hypotensive reactions uh, the ongoing ano lang po, doc, the ongoing blood loss po, doc, the bleeding po. Uh, I think you ha- need to have guidelines also, no? When yes, to po, stop, doc. when to discontinue the antipsychotic or continue the antipsychotic. So aside from uh, uh, the, ano, the anticipated hypotension no, as drug-drug interaction with anesthesia, what else? Would you, ano, para what are the indicators also that you would discontinue or hold the antipsychotic for a while? Uh, in regards to the uh, possible, also the possible side effects it may, if it may cause EPS product or mga agitation or mga akathisha, that which will make it harder for the patient to be treated. Po. In case of your patient. In the case of your patient? Uh, in the case of my patient, po naman doc. Uh, uh, 
after the article, I'll have to review that one for mm -hmm. more. Ano. Okay, so you, you have to, ano, ha? Yes, po, Doc. Uh -uh. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh -uh. Okay. Uh, mo, mo, uh, I'd like to move on to, uh, sorry, Paul. So, uh, for the I am already, uh, since uh, it was already referred to Neuro, they already called it as neurosyphilis uh, clinically as the, as the evidences point to a positive, uh, for the, the presence of the positive, being positive for syphilis. And then the multiple sexual partners, as well as the uh, physical exam, uh, which presented with uh, symptoms that point to a posterior dorsal tract uh, uh, involvement, such as the, the diminished reflexes, the ataxia, the argyl Robertson pupil. So they already called it for near syphilis. They, are, they also requested CSF studies to further CSF analysis to further uh, see the if there is any presence of the uh, treponyms in the CSF and to assess the level of infection. Uh, but upon the resu results, the results came out clear, colorless, normal, with no blood. Cell count is zero. Uh, there are, and was technically unremarkable po as stated. So they start, uh, they first opted to start for PNG IV, but current, at that point in time, there was no stock. So opted, opted for septiaxone 2 gram IV TPOD for 14 days, uh, which on research that uh, septiaxone can also be used for the treatment of neurosyphilis. So uh, as a psychiatrist based on neurologic finding in the CSF finding, so so what do you agree now with the uh, inter internal medicine that this is neurosyphilis, mm -hmm. considering the onset of the behavioral change and uh, when was the pain, when ano uh, oh, yon, oh, oh, considering yes. the CSF findings. The onset yes. of behavioral change, the yes, promiscuity. Po. When was the patient diagnosed with syphilis? Mm. At, this uh, at this point, po, doc, uh, the syphilis was just diagnosed recently, po, kasi wala po talagang health seeking behavior. Po. But at this point in time, uh, regarding your question, po, doc, I was leading heavily then po, toward to a psychotic disorder secondary to the neurosyphilis po as uh, I would be also discussing earlier po, uh, later po, why, why my diagnosis is that po. Okay. Thank you po. Uh, CL, CL wise, they, the, there was no, at this time, uh, there was, it was unremarkable for her findings. Uh, she was comfortable uh, she felt uh, she felt that she felt better as that as her condition was already treated with no not much problems and then on the next the following days uh, uh the following day the services already uh, placed her on may go home uh, for i am continued daily antibiotics and to follow up after two weeks for ob follow up after two weeks with uh, take home medications likewise of two milligram daily at night and then uh, to be seen after two weeks. Now, uh, for her fo follow up, uh, it was a little above two weeks, but uh, it was via virtual consult uh, of note that she was seen calm and cooperative via virtual consult and observed to be sitting on the chair with deliberate responses to the questions. She has been compliant to her medication with no wandering behavior noted with good sleep and appetite. Uh, Ria was able to perform simple tasks such as setting plates and sweeping at home, uh, but still noted with thought blocking. Blank stares observed when she is not doing anything and no hostile behavior reported by the family and impaired judgment with partial insight to her illness. Hence, at this point in time, the uh, medication was still continued and fo to follow and reinforced the follow up with internal medicine, internal medicine and OB-GYNE as scheduled by the following services, along with the continuation of their medications. Now, 
they are again for follow up after two weeks at this point in time uh plan for npt once they are able and further psychoeducation not just for the psych psychiatry aspect but also with the regarding the uh, neurosyphilis, neurosyphilis of the patient and then still at this point a uh, cranial mri with contrast was still not was still not uh done now uh uh, just to sorry before I show that, just to up just to update uh, since uh, I saw the patient for virtual consult, uh, they have still not uh, uh, follow up again. The after two weeks na follow up po, but I do plan to follow through with them so that I can still I can still guide the patient and the family to the treatment of the patient, not just side wise but also for the medical condition. At that at this point in time, my final diagnosis for this for this uh, for Rhea is psycho psychosis and are two near syphilis antisocial personality traits, near syphilis with hypertension stage two uncontrolled. I mean sorry, but controlled na po yan, uh, with an ICD of uh, secondary psychotics syndrome with hallucinations and delusions. Permanent per per prominent personality traits or patterns, antisocial, and neurosyphilis, unspecified, and hypertensive heart disease. Now, this leads us to the great imitator. Now, sorry, uh, sorry, I have to. I know. Yes, uh, a question lang, no? Kasi, uh, uh, can you summarize, no, uh, why you are ano, parang considering antisocial? What what are the pervasive ah, yes, po do. Uh, behaviors noted here? Uh, looking back, po do, cur uh, cur currently, if if just currently, uh, she isn't currently presenting with pers uh, presenting traits of antisocial. Uh, but before the before during the younger age, there was the impulsivity, irritability, the lack of remorse, the lying of the patient. Which led to the, which led to her going to Manila, which led to her developing these symptoms. Po. So, but currently, upon this seeing the patient and asking the information, uh, there seems to be a total personality change as she seems more psychotic rather than rather than PD or personality traits. Po. Okay, please explore on that. Yes, Kasi, ano, I cannot see the pattern here of an yes, antisocial personality. Noted, Pudo. Uh -oh. Thank you very much. So, uh, to clarify, Dave, yes, you're po. not considering it anymore, right? Yeah, yes, Pudo. Okay, see, see. Thank you. Kasi po. it should not be in your final diagnosis if you feel that, you know, it's not pertinent to your case? Yes, Doc. Uh, uh, I do apologize for that. So, aside, uh, did you consider, uh, how would you rule out autoimmune encephalitis? Because you only have two differential diagnoses. Uh, at this uh, point in uh, time, po, Doc, uh, so an autoimmune encephalitis tests were not uh, uh, Da, dan po doc so uh hindi didn't chama ano so far doc but that is also a consideration that has to be explored po. Uh, what is prominent if this is autoimmune encephalitis that you could at this point rule out uh if this was uh, autoimmune encef uh, encephalitis po doc then that would be the ano po uh pre the presence of anapo. Oh, sorry, the presence of the anapun. Uh, the presence of the mass product of the OB mass of the patient product and then the probable immune reaction of the patient, 
patient that may lead to the current encephalitis po? No, the symptoms. What have you, uh, did you uh, read on autoimmune encephalitis? Ah, uh, yes, but, uh, as, far, as far as what I've read, po, uh, the, it could include ano po, yung mga, pair, mga cognitive, mga cognitions din po, uh, involuntary movements, uh, mga, to be specific po, doc, uh, if I remember po, that would be facial dyskinesias po. Uh, there is also a problem with actually balance po, doc, uh, some insomnia, seizures po, doc, mga ganun po. That's what I've done with autoimmune and self block na symptoms. Okay, so how do you rule that out? Uh, uh, currently, po, doc, uh, I've ruled uh, uh, the autoimmune encephalitis is to be considered, but also due to the information of the, uh, the, the mostly. First is the physical examination, which points to uh, the which points to the posterior dorsal uh, involvement, which is common with neurosyphilis pudo, and then the history of our patient pudo. So uh, the neurosyphilis is most more likely po. You read more. You read more on that, Dave. Huh? Yes, usually in autoimmune, usually what is ano, prominent, there's, ano. Yes, po. Meron yan, meron. <laughs> sige, from, oh, sige, sige. So it's more of. Uh, sorry, po. Ano, if it's, what is prominent sa autoimmune encephalitis, no? Common presentation. Among, and among the young ones. So, so, sige, I just want you to read on it. I will not give you the answers. Yes, but you have to read on autoimmune encephalitis also. Yes, Pudok. Thank you very much, Pudok. Move, moving uh, forward, Pudok. I'll be talking about the great imitator. <clears throat> so, Syphilis, again, is treatable, especially in the early stages, and should not progress, which should not progress to neurosyphilis. Now, the advent, again, of the antibiotics equals the less disease progression, which, of course, sadly, may lower clinical suspicion. But at this point, what if there was a given circumstance that became, that it became undetected and unmanaged, such as in Rhea? wherein she had those symptoms for quite some time. Now, I want, I just want, uh, for the sake of, of, of the clerks and uh, for the interns and present, now, if syphilis can occur at any stage of infection and take on many different forms, uh, again, from a benign meningitis to leading to strokes to tabus dorsalis, which is, again, the which is the slow degeneration of nerve cell fibers that carry sensory information to the brain, which is the po which is the posterior column. So, so that is why uh, those are the symptoms that could be seen in our patient: the unsteady gait, the loss of coordination, uh, and then the gen the general paresis, or with, which is the problem with mental function due to damage the brain from the untreated syphilis, so, so that's where we see the Ariel Robertson pupils. And then the range of psychiatric symptoms have also been reported among patients with nerve syphilis, including those seen in our patient three, which are persecutory delusion, auditory and visual, visual hallucinations, paranoia, personality changes, and cognitive impairment, which has earned nerve syphilis the epithet of the great imitator. Although more severe manifestations typically occur 10 to 25 years post-infection, it is of note that it can occur as early as one to two years post-infection, leading, leading to the dilemma of this case if, if this is a uh, schizophrenia or a neurosyphilis. 
diso uh, uh, psychotic disorder secondary to neurosyphilis along with the lack of lack of information. So I just want to uh, let you view this quickly. As you can see, there are different again stages of syphilis. Now, neurosyphilis has all of those has the symptoms again of argyle Robert. The present in a patient would be argyle, argyle Robertson pupils. There's ataxia. There is decreased TPR. There is loss of balance. Now, now any one of these can progress to neurosyphilis. So as you can see, it is quite uh, dangerous if not treated. Now, if you compare the the example of schizophrenia with the the psychotic symptoms of neurosyphilis, more or less, uh, if you do not include the the check for the neuro symptoms of your patient, you would really see that the the it is it might be schizophrenia in in our patient Ria, If we if she did if she did not have those ob any symptoms that she would have been referred to uh, to ob should not be cleared by im and then referred to us uh, if she went to our institution just for psychiatric consult you'd be you might be in immediately sold that it might have might be also uh, schizophrenia especially if you have not uh, addressed or assessed for sexual history partners uh, more direct neuro, uh, more proper neurological tests for the patient as because as you can see there could be delusions hallucinations or near speech but again in your syphilis there is a, the accompanied neurological symptoms so uh, in the end our history and our PE uh, is quite important still now in Ria she did test for positive for VDRL which also veer, uh, gear, which also uh, dictated our direction for the patient and was started the IV antibiotics to address her trypanemal infection. Now, uh, there are inconsistent limited data about the prevalence of psychic symptoms in syphilis, but of treated patients uh, for the psychotic symptoms as well as the, the neurosyphilis itself, 17% continue to have residual symptoms during follow-up. As you can see, uh, with the two-week follow-up with Rhea, there is still a there's still noted uh, thought blocking uh, or thought, thought blocking. There is still decreased functioning that, that which can be, at, which may be attributed to a residual sim, to the residual symptoms of uh, schizophrenia. Now, now uh, for uh, Dr. Benignos asked questions, uh, asked a question earlier about the laboratories to be, done or the, the the confirmatory so as you can see uh for the patient so the vdrl was done uh and then the csf protein and csf blood cell count were normal the csf i mean the vdrl was reactive and then uh there should be also tppa or treponema uh Pallidum, uh, agglutination tests, as well as the, and then as you can see here, the main medication noted is PENG, but again, ceftriaxone can also be used for, for the patient. Now for the, for the psychiatric aspect now, first and second generation psychotics and mood stabilizers have been shown to be useful an acute treatment of psychosis and agitation, hence the starting of risperidone. And, and it is often difficult, but once the treatment is started and there is noted improvement, it is often difficult to distinguish a pre-existing psychiatric disorder made worse by neurosyphilis from a secondary psychiatric disorder caused by neurosyphilis. As the two might coexist, or psychiatric symptoms could be wrongly attributed to schizophrenia because of a lack of careful clinical evaluation. But the bottom line is that neurosyphilis is a rare and challenging disease at present. Neuropsychiatric symptoms that we are present, such as hallucinations, delusions, and cognitive impairment may still persist years after antibiotic treatment can persist. Now, careful review of the sexual history and physical examination of the patient is required 
to guide testing and treatment for syphilis, as well as the clinical collaboration with neurology and infectious disease is ideal as repeat treatment with antibiotics might actually might alleviate some residual psychiatric symptoms. So that is why the following up of Rhea is also key to further improve her condition as even if she did finish already the, the antibiotic treatment, a possible retreatment may be suggested to and to the IM department if they will consider it to improve the possible to possibly improve more the psychiatric symptoms and return Rhea to the previous level of functioning. Now, this case also emphasizes the importance of testing for syphilis in new onset psychotic and or cognitive disorders, so as ensuring complete treatment to prevent further complications and disabilities. And for us psychiatrists, we have to remember always that in every primary psychiatric disorder, looking into a medical condition that coexists or contributes to the psychiatric symptoms is a must. We must think outside the box if possible. Think as if there is no box in high above the ceilings. Aim as if no ceiling can limit you by Israel Moore Ayivor. And with that, I thank you for listening. Good morning. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, I have a question. Yes, Pa. So at this point, would they coexist? Uh, at this point, they, they pretty much show could possibly coexist with each other. Po. So what is your final diagnosis for this patient? Currently, po, doc, I still go muna po with... Uh, my final diagnosis will be psychotic disorder, secondary to neurosyphilis, but with further uh, follow-up from this patient, po, doc, and then further... Ano, uh, schizophrenia is still in on the table, po, doc. Oo, kasi yung sex, did you ano, uh, elicit a good sexual history from the patient? Kasi di ba the patient started uh, presented with behavioral symptoms early yes, then? Okay. So is it uh, parang, uh, so um, my question is, did the behavioral change happen before she had syphilis? If you... Uh, or um, I know, I explored the sexual history or after she got syphilis. So these are the things that you have to explore. Yes, Bob. Uh oh, you need to have a good sexual history from this patient. Yes, Bob. And also, no, if this is uh, what is the most common, ano, di ba pag if this is neurologic or there are parang comorbids, no, with uh, yung medical illness. So, uh, I think yung meningeal sign is also uh, an indicator that you have to check. Kasi, oh, all, if this is acute, no? Oh, yes, although, but... all along, the patient did not present any uh, meningeal signs. Only the, ano, uh, soft signs. Yes, Paul. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, I'd like to comment uh, lang related to Dr. Benigno's comment. Uh, it, it's very good that you emphasize that during the acute phase, meningeal signs no, is what we are looking for. So like in this case, one differential diagnosis that she asked you is about uh, autoimmune encephalitis. So maybe, Dave, what can help you is to look at the chronicity of the case. Yes, Paul. No? So that can help you rule in and rule out. Oh, oh. Which much. one would present acute and subacute phase mm -hmm. uh, in relation to the how your patient presented na chronic? Yes, po. po. Thank you very much, po. Doc. This is a good case for you to follow through. Yes, no? po. Kasi at this point, the diagnosis is not final pa. No? Kasi I'm uh, more of, uh, with the way you presented, I am actually leaning into uh, dual diagnosis mm, yes, no, or comorbidity, but you need to have to explore more. No? Yes, Paul. And then I think this is a good case report. <laughs> if, you, if you're interested, okay. uh, pwede ito gawing case report in Thank the realm much, of research. Doc. 
Uh-oh, we can submit this day, pero yun na, i-ano natin, i-follow through natin yung patient. Yeah. Thank you po, Doc. Nice ito. Yes po, Doc. So, Thank you very much. So, just emphasize, Dave, ha, yung need for follow-up consult. Kasi di ba, we do know, merong poor health-seeking behavior rin yung patient. Kaya tayo nahihirapan. Opo. Right? Uh, yes po. So, that's something that we need to address. no? Sa CL, that's one of the things that it's a common challenge, right? Yes, po. So I think that's one of the things you can, uh, the skills you can hone during the CL uh, rotation, how to improve that health-seeking behavior of our patients. Yes, po, though. Okay. Uh, are there any more comments or questions from the consultants? None for me. Uh, none okay. for me. Okay, thank you. So, if there are no more questions, thank you to the consultants. Please don't forget to fill up the forms, the evaluation forms that I've already sent to you. And thank you, Dave, for presenting such an interesting case. And let's follow this up. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Bye.